Hey guys, welcome to The Strong Young Man. You are the average of the five people you associate with most, so pick your friends carefully. Humans are extremely susceptible to the moods, emotions, and even the ways of thinking with those who they spend their time. You are a reflection of whom you associate with and you subconsciously adopt their belief systems. Make sure you carefully pick the people who you allow to penetrate your perimeter. Make a tribe out of men who bring value and enforce a strict boundary on those who don't. You must be selective with the members of your tribe. It's better to have a tribe of two men that bring value rather than have extras that just make up the numbers. Understand that as a tribe becomes smaller, the members become more loyal. Smaller tribes are the tightest and most stable groups. We see this with primates, our closest ancestors. Primates will fight to the death to protect members of their small gang, but they'll be more interested in self-preservation as the gang becomes larger. This is also reflected in military units. A fire team of two to five people is more stable than a section of six to 20 people, and a section is more stable than a platoon of 20 to 50 people. As the unit becomes larger, individuals don't develop meaningful bonds on the same level as they would if the tribe were smaller. The large variance in group beliefs and opinions becomes divisive, and the individuals become more focused on their own interest at the expense of the group. It is for this reason that smaller cliques will form from a larger group once the group exceeds a critical threshold. It is extremely important for you and the other members of your tribe that you keep the group small and limited to those who bring value. Select people with desirable and admirable characteristics. Their positive traits will become yours through osmosis. Any number of someone's positive traits can infect you. Use this to your advantage to improve your defects. If you are deficient in knowledge, associate with the learned so you can soak up the information they offer. This will encourage you to build upon that defect. If you aren't intelligent, the worst thing that you can do is to associate with the unintelligent or people who enable unintelligence. You should never associate with people who have traits you detest. Again, assert your boundaries on these people to avoid their negative traits infecting your tribe. It is imperative that you do not allow negative people to penetrate your perimeter. Negative people who don't measure up to your ideal will cause chaos for the other members. I covered the dangers of getting involved with negative people in episode 38. Essentially, negative people will radiate their negativity outwards, drawing disaster on the tribe. Do not associate with them and do not introduce them to your tribe. Assert boundaries on these people early and be as harsh as you can. You cannot afford to have your tribe become entangled in their negativity. This includes people who oppose your purpose. You don't need anyone telling you what to do, especially if they are telling you to slow down or to take a break. A shark that stops swimming dies because there is not enough water flowing through the gills. Similarly, when riding a bike, it becomes easier to balance when you are traveling fast, but it becomes harder to balance as you slow down. You should slow down only if it suits you and only of your own initiative. Sometimes people will tell you to slow down because your drive for success makes them feel inadequate and this is uncomfortable for them. If you hear this from other members in your tribe, ostracize them immediately and lean in the other direction. Put your head down and work harder. The free time that you acquire by cutting them loose will enable you to channel more energy into the creative endeavors that made them insecure in the first place. This will serve to punish their undesirable qualities. As you progress through life and you build yourself up, you may need to change the environment and the people you surround yourself by. Add people who share the same ideals and goals. As you improve your situation, previous friends may lose interest in you. Allow others to fall off as necessary, especially if they become toxic. Be aware that your successes may trigger anxieties in the weaker members of your tribe. They may become anxious at the thought of being left behind. Make their visions a reality and leave them behind before their anxieties and insecurities plague you and the tribe. Your personal successes will bring to light the inadequacies of the insecure. Individual successes should be the success of the tribe. All members of your tribe should want the best outcome for you and the other members of the tribe at all times. No individual should become envious of another person's successes. This indicates that they are operating from their own frame of reference with their own interests as a priority. Life is not a zero-sum game. Be careful of people who demonstrate envy and become aggravated by your successes. They will subtly sabotage you and prevent you from unlocking your full potential. This sabotage may even operate on a subconscious level. Be on the lookout for signs of envy through a person's dissatisfaction of your successes. They will criticize your successes or attribute it to luck. Look for indications that display a person is taking joy in your sufferings or your setbacks. It might even be beneficial to invent a setback to see how they take it. If you get an inkling that they are yearning for your demise, ostracize them immediately. Do not hesitate. You have to be ruthless to protect you and the other members of your tribe. If your tribe becomes too big, you should not be afraid to ostracize members that bring the least value. 
This will also remind the other members that they must continue to bring value in order to remain within the perimeter. Membership of your tribe is a privilege. Remember that smaller tribes embody higher levels of loyalty and are the tightest and most stable. If you're attempting to put a dint in the universe, you may only have time to maintain one to two close friends anyway. In this instance, surround yourself by people who share the same goals and people that share the same mindset philosophically. Continue to work hard yourself so that you can provide value to this tribe. You need to be held accountable too. Birds fly in flocks in strategic aerodynamic formation to reduce the force of drag that each bird has to overcome to get to their destination. This conserves energy, which could mean the difference between life and death. Professional cyclists adopted this concept to form a peloton. Similarly, associating with people with the same mindset and goals will make your journey to your destination that much easier. These are the kinds of people that you want to have in your tribe. These people reduce the resistance that opposes you. This will allow you to conserve energy. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. The book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 17. Another thing to consider is that you may experience a period of your life where you realize that every single member of your tribe is holding you back. You must excommunicate yourself from this tribe. Think of it as ostracizing everyone else and becoming your own tribe. Research has indicated that the collective intelligence of the group is often lower than the individual with the lowest IQ. The reason for this is that people in groups do not wish to stand out for fear of being ostracized. Most of the time when people operate in groups, they do not engage in nuanced thinking and deep analysis. Only individuals with a degree of detachment and calmness can do so. Instead, they say what they can to fit in with the group spirit. Humans have evolved to prioritize social approval because the ones who didn't were ostracized from their tribes and almost certainly faced death. They were bred out of existence. Even though we live in a civilized world where excommunication doesn't mean death, the human psychology still operates the same. This social approval releases oxytocin signaling in the brain. In order to continue to receive this addictive hormone, continuous social approval is required, and this means aligning with the majority of the group at all times. While this led to survival in a scarce environment, it causes problems in a society of abundance. We only need to look at the left-wing political activists, the sheep, who are addicted to this oxytocin signaling. These people are slowly but surely destabilizing our entire society. When faced with critical decisions in life, strive to act on your own accord. You must resist this downwards pull of the group and start your own tribe, especially if your tribe has toxic beliefs, behaviors, or inclinations. Forge your own path and handpick a new tribe or join an existing tribe of a higher quality. In the short term, you may be better off alone rather than associating with people who hold you back. The perspicacity you gain from this will enable you to focus on what is really important to you moving forward, and this will make it easier to attract like-minded individuals. Exercise this with caution though. Men isolated in the Paleolithic era were inefficient hunters, and they were quickly wiped out by predators and other tribes. You might think that this prehistoric thinking is outdated in the modern world, but paradoxically, it is more relevant now than ever before. Men have the ability to experience conflict on a global scale, and there is nowhere that you can run to escape our connectedness. You need a tribe of men to stand united in the face of the world's problems. Just make sure it's a tribe of strong, courageous men that will bring you up. When building a tribe, only allow members that demonstrate all the positive characteristics outlined in this episode. Only allow men who are on the same wavelength philosophically to become part of your tribe. Men with opposing viewpoints can respect each other and have a civilized debate, which can allow you to experience people with opposing points of view. But when it comes to people who are in your tribe, you need people who are on the same wavelength about greater societal problems and their solutions. This will help build an us versus the world mentality, which will help build a stronger, tighter, and more loyal tribe, free from internal dissent. You should be able to freely criticize the members of your tribe, and they be free to criticize you. This kind of appraisal is crucial to unlocking your full potential, individually and tribally. These friendships should be symbiotic, with all members benefiting from each other on a similar level. You should be able to call out your friends on their deficiencies without it blowing out into an argument or then becoming defensive. A man's capacity to receive criticism is a reflection on how comfortable he is at receiving masculine energy. Most men have developed resistances to receiving critical feedback. Make sure that people are able to humble themselves to your criticisms before they are allowed to enter your perimeter. When building or rebuilding your tribe, understand that the members of your tribe do not have to be in your locale. If you surround yourself by any positive influencer, they will impart their wisdom onto you. If you are looking to unlock your full potential, then you may only wish to associate with the best men. The internet can be a valuable tool to filter for men that share your values. 
Forums, books, YouTube, and podcasts are all great sources of positive influence. Just remember that these people won't always be there for you in times of crises. You must eventually create a tribe of men in close proximity to you. Proximity creates familiarity and a shared identity, which can lead to personal growth. Proximity means you can socialise and have two-way banter. Men hanging shit on each other is a good indication that the tribe can function well and has a positive relationship to masculine energy. A localised tribe also means that you can do activities together. You can't do this over the internet. If you know guys that are on the same wavelength philosophically, then reach out to them. Set aside time to do stuff with them and build trust. Make the activities you do have a purpose. You will achieve the greatest level of satisfaction in your interaction by exchanging new ideas, sharing information, and discovering solutions to problems. Remember, women talk about things, men do things. Men communicate and bond on a deeper level when they are engaged in a productive activity or an event that combines a shared goal, especially if it's putting a dint in the universe. To finish off today's episode, I want to illustrate the potential destruction that associating with the wrong people can bring. In 1931, psychologist Winthrop Niles Kellogg and his wife decided to adopt a baby chimpanzee. The couple planned to raise the chimp alongside their own baby boy Donald. For the next nine months, for 12 hours a day and seven days a week, Kellogg and his wife conducted tireless tests on Donald and the chimp. Eventually, the chimp hit a cognitive wall. Understandably, the chimp was unable to learn the normal behaviours of human children past an elementary level. Interestingly, what was also observed was that Donald began to display traits that demonstrated he was adopting the primal behaviour that the chimp demonstrated, such as movements and mimicking cries. Donald also showed signs of cognitive retardation. The major takeaway from this is that in order to bond with someone of a level of intelligence well below your own, you must descend to their level in order to relate. You cannot have meaningful conversations with unintelligent people without dwindling your own intelligence. Do this for long enough and the change will become permanent. Thanks for watching today's episode. In episode 46, I'll go through the best ways to meet women naturally. Subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when it drops. Catch you then.